Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm the trainer here at New Heat. We're specialists in warm water underfloor heating and integrated renewables. And we've been designing, supplying, and supporting these low temperature heating systems for 30 years now. We wanted to share our knowledge to help you learn all you need to know about heat pumps. I'm going to talk a little bit about how they work, how to know whether a heat pump is right for your project, pros and the cons of both air source and ground source heat pumps, and how it affects your choice of heat emitter, as well as touching on the microgeneration certification scheme or the MCS, the standards and what this means for government funding. A heat pump is a renewable source of heat. It's an alternative to a boiler, but rather than using gas or oil to generate the heat, it's using electricity to harvest environmental energy. In really simple terms, a heat pump takes heat energy from the air or from the ground, even at really low temperatures, passes this through a compressor circuit to increase its temperature to supply all of your heating and all of your domestic hot water. It can do this in temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees, which is way below what we'd expect to experience in UK wintertime. The heat pump absorbs the latent heat energy into a refrigerant. This process increases the energy content of the refrigerant, changing it from a liquid into a vapor. The vapor is then compressed by an electrically driven compressor, which increases its pressure and therefore its temperature. The condenser then liberates this heat energy into the water that's then used in the heating and the hot water system. In a well insulated building with a good heating system, the heat pump will transfer three to four times more energy into the property as heat energy than it uses electrical energy to extract it. But we're all familiar with boilers. A boiler is a combustion appliance. It uses a fuel like gas or oil to provide heating and hot water. It gives you a blast of quick, high heat energy. A heat pump, on the other hand, uses electricity and emits about 65% less carbon than a gas boiler. Heat pumps do work best when producing much lower temperatures. When you keep the water temperatures low by minimizing the property's heat losses and by choosing the right heat emitter, you maximize the efficiency of the heat pump. And this is one of its biggest benefits. A well-designed heat pump in the right scenario will be up to 400% efficient, which is known as the COP or a coefficient of performance of four. This means that for every kilowatt hour of electricity that's used to power the heat pump, you can expect up to four kilowatt hours of heat energy to be generated for heating and hot water. A modern boiler achieves just 90% efficiency. This is a COP of 0.9. When you create an efficient low temperature system with a heat pump, you also keep running costs nice and low. So for every 15 pence you spend on electricity, it's like you're getting 60 p's worth of heat energy out, if that makes sense. So how do you know if a heat pump is suitable? There are some really important considerations that will tell you whether it's the right choice or not. To keep it simple, there are three things to ask. Number one, how well insulated is the property? Like with any heating system, it's important that the home is warm and that the heating bills stay low. The better insulated the property is, the lower the heat losses and the less energy required to heat the home. Ideally, you want to be insulated up to or as close to current building regulations. For this reason, in a new build, a heat pump is likely to perform excellently. If it's a renovation project, then you do need to do all that you can to improve the insulation to minimize your heat losses. We're talking walls, windows, floors and roof. But if it's poorly insulated or all poorly designed and installed, then it's not going to be efficient or economical and completely negate the point of having a heat pump. Number two, what's the heat emitter? A heat pump is at its most efficient when producing low water temperatures. To effectively heat the home with these lower temperatures, you absolutely need to install a suitable heat emitter. Ideally, warm water underfloor heating, or you need to look at large surface area radiators. I'll go into more detail on this a little bit later on. Number three, what is your aim? It's really important to understand what it is that you're looking to achieve by the installation of a heat pump. If the driver is environmental, a heat pump matches this expectation. But if the belief is that a heat pump will cost far less to run when the property already has mains gas, then it's not such a good match. When it comes to suitability, this is where an experienced supplier or installer can really help. A good understanding of heat pumps Knowing how to design an efficient low temperature heating system will mean that they can honestly tell you whether a heat pump is a viable option for your property. It's also worth checking if the supplier supports the system after it's been installed. It just gives that extra confidence that they stick by the system that they're designing for you. 
it's so important. So to recap quickly, a heat pump is best suited to well insulated property designed together with a low temperature heat emitter, which is ideally underfloor heating. There are two main types of heat pump, air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps. Let's talk through how they are different and why you might pick one over the other. This is an air source heat pump. It works by drawing heat energy from the ambient air. The heat pump would actually sit outside of the property and inside you'll have your domestic hot water cylinder and you may also have a buffer tank. Generally, an air source heat pump can be installed under permitted development, so no need for planning permissions. Unless you're in an area of outstanding natural beauty, it's a site of special scientific interest or the building is listed. You'll need to consider the heat pump's proximity to neighbour's boundaries and this is something an experienced supplier will support you with as part of the system design. So let's talk about the pros and cons of an air source heat pump. So the pros, they take very little space up. The air source heat pump sits outside of the property and inside you just need to find room for a domestic hot water cylinder and a buffer tank. So in most properties, that will be a space like a traditional airing cupboard. Air source heat pumps can heat both small and large properties. A single fan unit like this one will typically serve up to about 200 to 220 square meters. Once you get above that, you can opt for a larger twin fan unit. Cost, an air source heat pump can cost as little as 50% less than a ground source heat pump. Efficiency, a well-designed air source heat pump system will be around 300% efficient. So for every one kilowatt hour of electrical energy that it uses, you can expect it to output three kilowatt hours of heat energy. An air source heat pump works effectively all year round, even in temperatures below freezing. This is something that people always do wonder about. The best way of putting it is to think about absolute temperature. Freezing or zero degrees centigrade is still 273 degrees Kelvin. So on the absolute temperature scale, there's still lots of energy available for the heat pump to draw from, even in what we consider minus temperatures. And the cons, there's an aesthetic impact, the visibility of the heat pump. Not everybody wants to see a heat pump outside their home. So this can put some people off. You can't box in an air source heat pump or cover it because that will restrict the airflow around it and significantly impact on its efficiency. Sound is often a worry, but if you do pick the right heat pump, they're really quiet. It's also worth bearing in mind that in the summer, when you're in the garden or have windows open, this is when your heat pump is rarely on because you won't be using your heating system. Another con is that they are really not suitable for older or poorly insulated properties. The heat pump would struggle to heat them and it would cost far too much to run. The total cost for an air source heat pump, including the installation, will be in the region of around 10 to 12,000 pounds. Obviously, this really is dependent on the project and the size, the heat pump you choose, the capacity of the heat pump and your installer. There's potential for government grants to bring this cost down by up to £5,000. This is a ground source heat pump. They work by drawing warmth, indirect solar energy that's stored within the ground. They're similar in size to an upright fridge freezer and the heat pump, domestic hot water cylinder and the buffer tank are all installed inside the property usually within a dedicated plant room. The collectors that extract the solar energy from the ground are outside, which would either be ground loops, where you bury the collector pipework around 1.2 meters below the ground and cover a large area, or boreholes, where you drop collectors down a vertically drilled hole. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of a ground source heat pump. Pros, they're very efficient, as much to 400%. So for every kilowatt of electrical energy that it uses, you can expect it to output around four kilowatt hours of heat energy. That's because the ground provides a really stable temperature from which to draw all year round. There's no need to worry about aesthetics. The ground source heat pump is hidden away with inside the property in a plant room. They're almost silent. If you were to sit next to a ground source heat pump, you'd struggle to know that it's running. They're really that quiet. Cons. They do need a lot of space to install the ground loops. We would advise around three times the total footprint of the property that you're heating. So if you've got a 200 square meter house, you could need up to 600 square meters of ground for the ground collectors. This is land that you use solely for the ground loop collectors. You can't build on it afterwards, you can't put down a driveway, as this will affect the efficiency of the heat pump. You also need a dedicated plant room space inside the property for the heat pump, for the hot water cylinder, and for the buffer tank. 
so a ground source heat pump tends to be suited best to larger properties and is usually factored into a new build project more so than a renovation. Cost is probably the biggest downside of a ground source heat pump. They can be double that of installing an air source because of the extra materials and the groundwork required to install the ground collectors. And if you do choose to go down the borehole route rather than ground loops, the cost can really start to stack up. And just like with an air source, we would never recommend installing a heat pump in an older or poorly insulated property. It wouldn't produce the temperatures that you need and would cost far too much to run. How much does a ground source heat pump cost? The total cost for a ground source heat pump when going for ground loops, including the installation, could be in the region of 15 to 20,000 pounds. This is a real ballpark figure, as every project is different. If you opted for boreholes, then you'd also need to factor in a cost of a specialist drilling contractor, which can add thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of pounds. And don't forget, there is always potential for government grants like the Boiler Upgrade Scheme that can help bring down your overall costs by about £6,000. Air or ground source, which should you choose? There are three main questions to ask. Number one, is the property well insulated enough? You do need to get as close to current building regulation standard as possible. It's so important. You should always start with improving the fabric of the building as much as possible to reduce the heat loss. Number two, what's the plot like? Unless you've got a large area of land available, up to three times the total floor area of the property, it would be best considering an air source heat pump. It will be easier and considerably cheaper to install. Number three, what's your budget? This can rule out a ground source heat pump. Whilst it's true that a ground source heat pump can be slightly more efficient, an air source heat pump is still tried and tested and trusted renewable heat source that can work all year round. We know that it can come down to personal preference. Providing the property is suitable and well insulated and the heat pump system is designed and installed correctly, both would work well. Heat pumps are designed to produce low temperature water. This is a really important feature to bear in mind because it means that it affects your choice of heat emitter. I'll give you an example. With a standard boiler and radiator system, you would be using water temperatures of around 70 to 75 degrees to heat your rooms. With such hot water, the rooms in the home can be heated through a relatively small surface area, the radiators that most of us are used to. Imagine taking that boiler out and just switching it for a heat pump, leaving the radiators as they are. For the heat pump to operate efficiently and to keep heating bills low, it wants to produce temperatures of around 40 to 45 degrees. You've nearly halved the temperature, so those same size radiators are never going to be able to heat your home without either ramping the flow temperature up significantly or increasing the surface area of your heat emitter. The heat pump works harder to produce much higher temperatures, so you reduce its efficiency and use considerably more energy. That's when running costs can become a problem. So what you need to do is install a suitable low temperature heating system that will work in harmony with the heat pump. The most popular and efficient option is warm water underfloor heating. With underfloor heating, your entire floor surface becomes your heat emitter. You're increasing the emitter area massively. That means you can comfortably heat a home with far lower water temperatures. It's up to 40% more efficient to pair underfloor heating with a heat pump than with radiators for just this reason. Underfloor heating offers so many other benefits too like the feeling of warm floors and more space. Check out our video on underfloor heating for more information. It's worth mentioning that you can still have radiators with a heat pump if underfloor heating isn't an option. They just need to be sized to suit much lower flow temperatures. This means that they're more than double the size of what you'd be used to, which isn't ideal. If you're looking to install a heat pump, you need to know about MCS. MCS is the Microgeneration Certification Scheme. It is a standards organisation and a mark of quality for renewable heating systems. MCS completely dictates how a heat pump should be installed from the way that the heat pump is sold all the way through to how the system is designed, installed and how it is commissioned. The benefit of MCS is that you have peace of mind that the heat pump and its installation meets industry expected standards. It sets out minimum efficiencies and what you can expect from the performance of that heating system. So it'll have been designed and installed correctly and signed off with an MCS certificate, which means that the heat pump will work as expected and be affordable to run. I could talk about MCS and all that's involved for ages, but to keep it simple, there are three steps you need to go through to receive an MCS certificate. 
Number one, the heat pump itself must be MCS certified. All of our units, both the ground source and air source heat pumps are. Number two, the installer must be MCS certified or work with a contractor who is. New Heat is an MCS certified contractor, so we're able to support heating engineers to install to MCS standards. Our in-house design software has been built to adhere to all of the MCS design criteria under MIS 3005 standards. And number three, the installation must also be to MCS standards. There's specific guidance for both air source and ground source heat pumps on how they're sized, positioned, designed, and as well as how the system should be installed and commissioned. There is also something we help with as part of our MCS support. We do send one of our own engineers to commission the job on site. They'll check over the heat pump, make sure everything has been installed correctly and safely, set it up and run through how it works with you. After this, we provide the MCS certificate, which then can be used to apply for any grants like the boiler upgrade scheme. So that brings us to the end of all you need to know about heat pumps. Just to recap briefly, Heat pumps are a renewable, low temperature heat source. They work brilliantly in the right type of projects and can be incredibly efficient and reduce carbon emissions by over 50% compared to a boiler. The key is insulation and choosing the right heat emitter. Making sure the system's designed to MCS standards. You need to create a low temperature heating system. I can't stress enough, if you get the fabric of the building right and get an experienced supplier to support you with the design, installation and meeting MCS criteria, you'll have a heat pump system that will work perfectly for many, many years. I really hope that this has been helpful. If you have any questions at all, would like to talk to us about your specific project, our team are always happy to help. Please get in touch. You can contact us through our website or email us via info at nu-heat.co.uk.